Hello everyone, Tech Tony here and today we're gonna select the settings for our new Let's Play series where we will play in Pertam in the most hostile environment, a PvE environment and I will also be teaching you the tricks uh, and tips that I would employ and use on a PvP server to also account for uh, hostile enemy players. So let's go ahead and click new game to start uh, here we have scenarios these are missions uh, but they're not meant for you to uh, create a permanent uh, save file there uh, more like play the mission and at the end expect like rolling credits and uh, the mission to be over uh, so we're gonna avoid loading a scenario and we're gonna select custom game in custom game we can load a few presets which are pretty cool for example empty world is good to load in creative mode so that you design blueprints and you're not having to save into your memory an entire space station or pirate space stations and, you know uh, things like that uh, extra blocks that you really don't need so that's a pretty cool one um, but yeah mainly we avoid the other starting uh, scenarios because of that because we don't need the pre-built blocks that are there and they will just consume memory so instead we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom to star system scenario or, or preset this one will load in an entire solar system with all the planets available in PC if you were on console you would have to select a, between distant moons, home system, or alien worlds. And you would select these settings depending, or these presets, depending on which uh, planets you want to have available. Uh, I believe this is a feature to conserve uh, memory for Xbox uh, or and PC uh, consoles. I mean, uh, PlayStation consoles so they split up the planets into these different worlds uh, and if you look on the server list when you're selecting join world for example if i go back and i say join game uh, notice that game mode uh, oh here world there is a world and the, this one says star system so on xbox you would have the world option show you exactly um, what kind of planets you'll find on that server so if you want to play in a pvp server that has the moons you pick distant moons and you'll have triton titan and europa if you want to play in mars the moon and earth you pick home system and if you want to play in uh, the alien world or pertam then you select a uh, alien worlds so we're going to select star system on PC and then we're going to name our save file and uh, I'm going to name it getting started series right per time all right and then I'm going to select survival as the difficulty or the game mode offline and then I will select the modular encounters mod which you can find on the workshop uh, or look in Steam I download it directly from Steam and I'll click this arrow to enable it activate it and I'm also gonna select the rivers air traffic and rival AI these are modular encounter sub mods that add NPC encounters uh, to the world and these are better than the scenarios uh, that we saw before because those were preloaded the moment we click start the game these ones will be generated uh, and destroyed on the fly as we're exploring they will spawn and despawn so they won't really occupy memory um, until you know um, they do and and then they don't take it <laughs> but yeah they're really good so props on the mod authors that uh, they uh, made these so uh, 
but other than that everything else will be vanilla all the concept we'll see are, are gonna be vanilla now after you selected the mods that you want to play with you have to click advanced and uh, select uh, the finer details of the ser server there you get to choose uh, your char character's inventory size your block inventory size your assembler's efficiency or the speed uh, the, the refinery speed, the welding speed, grinding speed, the environment hostility is the one I first change and I set to normal. This will cause asteroids to fall and you can select the amount of them, cataclysm and the frequency. Uh, safe, no, no meteors and then cataclysm, you'll get them very often. So it, you can still build on the surface but in Armageddon, forget about building on the surface. Uh, now, next right away is a infinite normal density, sorry, uh, asteroid amount. These are how many you will see. So you can change the quantity of them per asteroid shower or meteor shower. Now, sound mode will... Oh, asteroids, I think this is space. Density of procedurally generated. Yes, this is space. These are not the meteors. Meteor showers are one thing. Asteroids are the ones you find in space. So asteroid amount is uh, that. How many asteroids are on the on the fields? The density of them. Uh, sound mode is going to be between arcade and realistic. I like realistic because in the vacuum of space, for example, there shouldn't be any sound since there's no air. For the for the sound waves to travel through, so therefore uh, there should be no sound. So it's kind of odd when you hear an explosion in the middle of space, uh, but uh, it's what it is. Uh, but so I like to set it to realistic, uh, so that it it does sound like that. It sounds kind of muffled and muted, but it sounds better than than just listening to explosions and things. Either way. Next, you have limit the world size, and this is for performance if you wanted to. Uh, view distance also, performance. Um, I'll set it to 20 kilometers, uh, which is just below the, the warning performance hits. Respawn ship cooldown. Here, you can uh, change the cooldown of respawn ships. Uh, enable sun rotation very self-explanatory will uh, disable the run the sun will stay in place this is a good thing to uncheck when you're playing on creative mode because if you're in the surface it'll always be daylight and you can use your uh, server settings advanced settings admin settings sorry uh, to fix the, the sun in whatever position you want next you have day duration uh, which you can shift in order to make it more you can I think probably even get it all the way to 24 hours Yep, so you can make it one-to-one -one the time that a, a full day would be in real time But this is also Accounting for time is not elapsing uh, Right, so like if, you, if you're playing on your local machine, then that would mean 24 hours of actual game time uh, but if you're playing on a public server then that's pretty cool setting to have because then the day elapses with your own day you could even time it so that whenever the server the game inside the server is always synced to your local time or the ones that you're you and your friends are playing so that's pretty cool a tip if you wanted to do that uh, i think it would add to the immersion um so like in the game, you would see sunset as the, at the same time that in your in in wherever you are, you're seeing the sunset. Anyway, max amount of objects is how many objects will be floating. So say say you drop stones uh, in the ground, like floating objects, random uh, pieces uh, like components that are flying around or dropped. Uh, so after a, a hundred, they'll start despawning. Uh, by default but you can add that but notice that will to uh, demand more resources from your PC and I don't really care objects flying around is not a good thing so I avoid those <laughs> block limits you could uh, establish block limits uh, which is uh, max blocks per player se uh, selection options over here uh, you can also limit the ship size now the total PCU 
by default on a single player is gonna be a hundred thousand but on um, public server it's gonna be 20,000 at least like the official servers will limit 20,000 PCU and uh, late I I'm gonna even read it it says total amount of PCU in world PCU is then global per faction or per player each block build costs some PCU destroy blocks are refunded so uh, PCU will be shared between the players or their faction so if you're in a faction your faction will have a 20,000 PCU count versus if you're split each player has 20,000 but you're still by yourself and your your faction your friends cannot use your spawn locations so it's important you want to have a faction and you want to be mindful of your PCU usage uh, especially on public servers you don't want to build a aesthetic base and then run out of PCU when you're building your battleship or your cruiser okay so build a cruiser and fight <laughs> and don't build bases because you will run out of PCU in no time uh, yes now backup saves keep uh, you can you can change that uh, but that's fine you don't I, I usually don't mess with that one now next you will have settings like auto healing um, delete respawn ships this one is a, a, a on public servers is always checked uh, because uh, it'll clean uh, it'll uh, it'll prevent the server from getting crowded with respawns where with with drop pods when you start a brand new game you'll be placed in a drop pod and if the game did not delete the respawn ships they would just start accumulating and eventually they would occupy every uh, all the sp all the space uh, in 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 memory in the block limit that we saw above and yeah it wouldn't be a good time for a public server that's been up for months you know so the uh, on single players it'll be unchecked so you don't have to worry your spawn ship you can turn it into your your first welder your first uh, flyer but on a public server do not uh, expect that a uh, drop pod to to last uh, a day or two you know um so i uh, yeah next oh you can also connect the drop pod to a space station and it'll prevent it from deleting uh so that's one way you can force it keep uh, uh, but still there's always a danger of deleting and its inventory uh so next is enable spectators enable copy paste show player names reset ownership uh, thruster damage the thruster damage is a uh, thrusters will damage components if they're blocking their output their thrust output uh, permanent death it's unchecked by default you can check it here weapons enabled cargo ships on destructible blocks on a uh, in-game scripts is one you want to check if you have mods uh, make sure your mods uh, that will specify whether they need in-game scripts or not modular encounters is one that does so we'll want to check that one enable tools uh, shake that may be one that I want to turn off that could improve the quality of the footage adaptive simulation quality Oh, that's interesting. What it says: enable reduction of quality of deformations and explosion affecting voxels in case CPU is on fire. <laughs> oh my God! What? Okay, we'll leave that checked on one. <laughs> I mean, checked on, checked on. Enable voxel hand. You can create voxels and define your voxels. Random encounters checked on. Enable third person view. Enable oxygen, enable air tightness, enable convert to station, unsupported stations off, enabled jetpacks, spawn with tools. You can check this one to kind of like give you a challenge, but if you, it's kind of like permadeath. If you spawn and you don't have tools, it's pretty much a permadeath. Uh, you can also uh, now enable voxel destruction so you can uh, alter the terrain you can disable that affecting the terrain enable spiders and enable wolves these are by default off 
they can be annoying. They're difficult to deal with and consume a lot of bullets to deal with. Plus, I don't like shooting wolves, okay? Don't, don't shoot wolves. I don't like it. I, I We can check the spiders. Spiders are like alien spiders that I don't mind. Uh, you know, it's not our ecosystem. It's someone else, some alien planet's ecosystem. Who cares? <laughs> I'm not sympathetic to spiders. <laughs> alien spiders that want to eat me. Okay, so uh, yeah, we can leave that one checked. And Bertam does have spiders. So we're, we're going to have to deal with the spiders. Um, and I'll show you that, but we'll go underground and the spider should not be an issue. Enable subgrid, you can now uh, control remote block removal. So uh, also enable subgrid damage. Let me see what this one does. Then. Enable block removal. Enable players to remotely remove own blocks from free up to free up their limit. Ah, yes. So say for example, uh, you have a starship that gets demolished. You know, there's gonna be, it's gonna be on this functional ship, uh, but there's gonna be a ton of blocks left over. Uh, so uh, those blocks of that uh, wreck, you may want to remove it from your PCU count or limit. So you can manually use uh, info tab on your control panel uh, to to ma uh, remotely remove entire grids from the the world. You just permanently delete them and you'll be refunded at PCU. Okay? Enable subgrid damage, enable friendly missile damage, enable unknown signals. Uh, this one is pretty cool. Uh, like unknown signals uh, are like cargo drops that fall from the sky and you'll be able to uh, locate them. Uh, they have a limited time. So you have to be quick, find them, collect them, uh, but they may have rewards like uh, engineer skins, uh, cosmetic skins that you can um, customize, use to customize your engineer. Enable respawn ships. So when people spawn in, they can have a drop pod or a space pod or a moon rover. Enable progression. If you want to load in and already have all the blueprints unlocked, you can uncheck this one. I'm gonna check it so I, I teach you guys how to uh, deal with that on the Let's Play series. Enabled auto, enable auto respawn. Uh, you can uncheck this one. I like unchecking this one because now I get to choose exactly which um, survival kit I get to spawn in. Official servers will have this one checked, which is super annoying because it means that you only respawn, you you automatically respawn in the closest first aid kit or medical bay uh, that you have, okay? The closest one to where you died. Meaning that maybe not the one that you want. Uh, or sometimes uh, you wanna teleport from one base location. Say you have a, we start off in Pertam, but then we find an asteroid that has platinum and we build a space station there then we want to be able to travel between the Pertan base and the uh, asteroid without having to have our cruiser starship fly in and out of gravity, hopefully. Uh, so what sometimes people do is, or if you're being raided, you want to get there ASAP, right? Uh, it's, 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 they will use a, a programmable block to, or, or a timer block to turn off their first aid kit that's closest to them off for a few seconds and after the timer is done the timer block will turn it back on and what that does is that the this engineer has a brief window where they can like uh, respawn their character they can click backspace in order to respawn and because that first aid kit close to them is powered off in that during that window they will be placed in another one in the in the one closest to in the, the nearest one that's on that's so if you only have two bases you will have successfully teleported from your space station to your uh, surface base instantly so i like to enable uh, auto respawn off because I get to choose and not have to do that magic, you know, uh, magic in order to, to, to get 
program I have to program blocks in order to get to one place to another this way I can just respawn wherever I want enable super grinding this is a bug allow super grinding exploit to be used uh, we don't want that I don't even know what it is so I don't really care about exploits uh, enable economy uh, enable economy yes we want to enable economy and we want to enable bounty contracts and also the weather system because the weather system is one of the most uh, visually uh, appealing uh, uh, effects that you can see in space engineers like the storms on Mars uh, are, are pretty epic so yeah I'll keep that on so we're gonna say okay and at this point we are ready to click start so uh, I'll leave that to the next video next coming up we're gonna click start and pick our starting location and then land on a planet uh, and actually get started so uh, next up finally episode one we're starting uh, but hopefully you enjoyed the explanation of how to customize your server before you even start um, and and how to pick remember the how to pick the perfect planet uh, as well if you're if you want to start in Triton or on the alien worlds or on the home system, Earth, Mars and Moon, you, uh, on console, make sure to pick the, the right scenario before you start because that one cannot be changed. Uh, this That one is at this point the, from this drop down here. Just make sure you here in PC will have all of them available in this one. Okay, let me make sure. Oh no, it reset my settings. If you switch, ah, luckily, luckily, it only reset. Yeah, awesome. Once, once you set all your settings, if you switch your preset, it will not override your advanced settings configuration, but it will reset your mod, your mod selection. So just make sure to go ahead and add them back in. You can always add this in after the fact of creation, the of creating the world. So there you go. Those are the ones we want. Click OK to save the changes. And now we're ready to click start again. So yeah, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Uh, and uh, to get notified when we upload new content, uh, please subscribe and hit the notification bell and then you'll be notified instantly. So hope you enjoyed and see you next on episode one where we actually land on per time and have to deal with the planet's challenges. Yeah, this is Tectony signing out. Have a good one guys.